What's up YouTube? This is John at Liquid House. Today's video is going to be about the Enermax Liquitech 360mm all-in-one cooler for AMD's Threadripper. But before I get to that, I want to apologize to you guys that I haven't been pumping out any content lately. I've been really busy with a lot of other stuff in life, but I'm back now, so that's what's important. But before we get into the review, let's talk a little bit about my current setup and what the hell is going on with that thing right now. Uh, currently, I have the 1920X, which is a 12-core, 24-thread Threadripper variant. I have the Asus Zenith Extreme, which is an incredible board. I'll get into that in another video. And then I got 32 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident Z RGB RAM at 3200 megahertz. When I got Threadripper, I decided I already had an all-in-one cooler that I was going to just rock, and it was a Corsair H110i GT. A little bit old school, but still worked out pretty good. Had a 280 rad on it. But turned out the pump was dead, so I had to ditch that idea, ripped it all apart. Threw it in an actual open loop system. It is creating a huge amount of restriction, more so than all the other blocks that I had on my X79 platform. But as long as it works and it's cooling the thing, I'm okay with it right now. Because it is temporary. I do have a block coming soon. Can't say much yet, but it's going to be really exciting and I'm ready to go for that. I have the 1920X overclocked to 4.1 gigahertz right now at 1.35 volts. And when I'm overclocking and benching it in, it does about 70C max temps. So it'll be very interesting to see my current cooling setup versus the Enermax Liquitech 360. So let's get going with this. So when you buy the Enermax Liquitech 360, you get this big old thing. Uh, I actually opened this box only once to give it a good look over. But as you can tell, the packaging is pretty sound. You get everything required. You get your three fans. You get the 360 millimeter radiator. Now this is pretty cool because and I'll take it out of the box. This is something I like about this radiator. There's actually rubber, I guess you could call them grommets, rubber pads for the fans to absorb vibration and noise a little bit. Can appreciate that. Looks really good. A little bit better than your conventional 360 all-in-one. The money maker right here, that we're all very excited about is the head of this thing. This thing is a monster. Now this thing is, per NMAX's uh, specs, supposed to get a 100% IHS coverage on Threadripper. Pretty excited about this. Looks really good actually. It's clean, it's simple, it's not vibrant and in your face and Losing its mind with RGB craziness. And then you also get your fan splitter, the mounting bracket and screws for the head, the block on this thing. I actually really like, it's gonna be hard for you guys to tell, but these tubes are actually very flexible. You can do all sorts of movements with it. And that is not something I've seen with Corsair coolers. I've seen a few with the Asetech, but they're not braided. And you get a really cool, nice little braid on these. The Corsair tubes are a lot less malleable, so that's really nice. You can kind of position it however you see fit. And you don't really have to worry about kinks. And you also don't have to worry about having those coils that go around the tube to prevent kinks, because as you can tell, I'm bending in pretty good and it's not kinking whatsoever. So a really nice job Enermax. I'm pretty stoked about installing this bad boy. The question is performance. So let's get into that. So installation should be pretty simple and straightforward. Nothing extravagant compared to a custom open loop. So let's just simply mount the fans to the radiator and the orientation that best suits your needs using the supplied hardware of course. I've Two recommendations on this one. Um, one always being use the hardware the company provides you. So the screw lengths are normally a specific length for a reason. You don't want them puncturing the uh, radiator. Another thing is to always set up your fans on a push configuration if you can. Um, temperatures will be better this way. Fans work a lot better during push. Now let's mount this radiator at the top. I know my case is pretty large and normally wouldn't be as easy for you guys, but that is one good thing about having a ginormous case like the Thermaltake W100, so thanks for that Thermaltake. Now we're going to be wiring up the fans 
Now I really do appreciate this little PWM splitter because not all coolers do come with splitters. They do sometimes require you to hook up your fans to a secondary fan controller or motherboard header. And that's assuming if your motherboard has the correct amount of headers, because if not, then you're kind of screwed. But it's a very nice PWM splitter and I do appreciate that. Now you screw in the standoff screws. These are actually very nice to grab and tighten in by hand. Just make sure they're tight all the way. AMD's Threadripper socket is actually very funny that they did a metric 3.5 thread size for these. Haven't really seen that before. Now let's use some thermal paste. Get this on here. Hopefully that's enough. It seems to be actually. I'm very surprised. Nice job, Enermax. Didn't think you guys would have enough in this little vial. Now here we go. 100% IHS coverage on this cold plate. Enermax, you outdid yourselves on this one. Looks great. Now let's get to the most crucial step, in my opinion, in actually mounting this thing to the processor. Most important thing to make sure you're doing when mounting any block to your processor is making sure that you keep pressure on it as you're threading in the thumb screws onto the standoffs. I've seen a lot of people make that mistake and when you realize that pressure before the thumb screws are tightened properly the block will unseat a bit. And I've seen air pockets get trapped in the paste which then turns into hot spots on the processor which sucks. So make sure that these things get hand tight at first so the pressure remains and then you can come in and tighten up with a screwdriver. Just make sure that everything gets torqued down correctly. One thing I am noticing while I'm torquing down these screws is that these fans also have rubber pads on the feet of them. And that's a really nice feature actually. You don't see that in the market much, even with the nicest fans on the market. Um, it's a really nice little feature that Enermax did, so even if you don't mount it up to the radiator that also have the rubber pads, you at least know that there is some dampening for these fans to use in another scenario, which is really nice. Almost got this thing torqued down now, and man, does this thing look good. Wow, I am impressed. With the same overclock and everything, the Liquitec 360 actually does better in temperatures than my makeshift Corsair cooler. And that thing had a lot more radiator space as well. I am truly impressed. Aramax, you absolutely killed it with this all-in-one cooler for Threadripper. There's something to be said about the simplicity of all-in-one coolers. Other than worrying about maybe the integrated pump dying on you, all-in-one coolers are a sound choice for those who don't want to dive into the realm of water cooling. The Enermax Liquitec 360 is a great choice and I highly recommend it. Thanks for watching, and if you're not subscribed already, hit that subscribe button and like this video. I really appreciate you guys. See you on the next one.